you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, say amen. Dad said earlier, he said, sometimes he just can't wait to come to church and preach the message that God's put on his heart. Well, I was sitting in a trash truck about 6 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday, and God put this thought on my heart. I sat there, and I began to think about it, and I began to ponder on it. And Man, Lord, the Lord just gave me so much, and I just began to think about it, and I just want to share what God's put on my heart with you this morning. Starting in verse number 24 of Acts chapter number 26, if you're there, say amen. And the Bible says, and as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. But I like how Paul responds here. He says, but he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth. Speak forth the words of truth. And of soberness. Church, can I stop right there and say that the word of God is truth. The word of God will stand when nothing else will. The word of God is what saves you. Verse number 26. For the king knoweth of these things before whom also I speak freely. And for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this king was not done in a corner. For this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa... Believest thou the prophets? And he said, I know that thou believest. And then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Let us pray this morning. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for who you are. God, and what you do, God, Lord, and you know our hearts this morning, and you know, Lord, that we're just so thankful for the message that you put on our heart, God, and I just pray Lord, that you'd help me to get out of the way, God, so that you can get in the way, Lord, that the preacher would show up this morning. Lord, I can't do anything except it be through your glory and your honor, God, I pray. Lord, that you just touch somebody's heart here this morning. Lord, I pray that if someone's on the verge of almost this morning, God, that they just give it all to you this morning, Lord. And I pray that you'd have your way in everything said and done in this message, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Let me bring you up to speed real quick. Paul is on trial before King Agrippa. And Paul, you, you, everybody knows the story of Paul. And uh, Paul had gone, he was persecuting the Christians. And he was going around killing them, throwing them in prison. And the Bible says that on the road to Damascus, um, uh, that, a, that a light shined bright. That uh, Paul couldn't see anything but Jesus. And uh, God began to speak to him. He said, Paul, it's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. He said, Paul, he said, I'm going to use you to testify against kings, against nations against all these the Jews, the Gentiles, the Greek. He said, I'm going to use you for my glory and my honor, Paul. He said, even though you're the worst among you. Paul said, I'm the worst among you. He said, I'm the chief of sinners. Church, uh, can I just stop right there and say, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter what you've been through. Uh, but can I tell you, about, by the grace of God, uh, you can come out of the fire. Uh, but Paul said, he, he began to, he began to he talk to you. Uh, King Agrippa said, I'm going to give you the liberty to speak for yourself. He said, I'm going to give you the freedom to tell your side of the story if you would. And I like what Paul, Paul began to speak. And he said, he said, King Agrippa, he said, I used to be just like you. He said, I was a, he said, I was a, he said, I was a fairy. He said, I was one of them. He said, I was a Jew. He said, I was going around and I was, I was persecuting the Christians. And I was, I was hurting all these people and throwing them in prison. And he said, oh, but on the road to Damascus church, I believe that's another message in itself. On the road to Damascus. Did you know that you're on a journey in this life, church? But it's up to you where you're going. You see, Paul had decided that he was going to go to Damascus, but one day, God got a hold of him. Church, can I say that I was on a road, but church, it wasn't to Damascus, and church, it wasn't to heaven, but it was on a road to hell, and I was headed straight for it, church. But can I say that the, uh, Paul said, he said, I saw a light, uh, and he said, I, was, I begin to see Jesus, and he goes through, and he says all these things that Jesus did for him, and, he, and then he says, but first off, he told him where he was going, why he stopped and where he was going after that. Church, can I say that I was going somewhere? Had God changed my plans and now I'm on the road to glory. But church, can I say that Paul had now stood his standing trial before King Agrippa. And King Agrippa said, you can speak. And when he's done, after he's done, he says, if Festus speaks up, it wasn't even Agrippa. You see, Festus was Agrippa's right hand man. But if Festus says, Paul, you must be crazy. He said, to go from what you were doing 
to go what you're doing now is just absolutely mad. He said, all the, all the learning that you've done, it must have made you crazy. But Paul said, oh, noble Festus, he said, I'm not crazy. He said, but the words that I speak are of truth. Yeah. And of, so, and of soberness. But church, can I tell you how that when God changes your life, He just doesn't change a little bit of it. He just doesn't change the part that you want Him to change. Oh, but God changes all of it, church. No change, no Jesus. Isn't that what they say? Church, Paul wasn't the same person that he used to be. Paul didn't do the same things that he used to do. Paul didn't say the same things that he used to say. But church, he was changed. I want to be different. I want to be changed till all of me is gone and all that remains is a fire so bright. Church, can I say that I can't do this on my own. I can't do it by myself. My flesh is too weak. I can't do it, but I can tell you one that can. I can tell you one that can take the, the, the gutter most and make him the uttermost. Poor David said he took my feet out of a miry pit out of a hole and he said he set my feet on a solid rock oh church i feel god in this place this morning uh, but paul began to and festus called him crazy and he said festus i'm not crazy but god has changed me for the better uh, and, and paul he said this he said agrippa you believe in the prophets and you know what he said never mind you don't have to answer that he said i know you believe in the prophets you see agrippa was a very intelligent man Agrippa knew everything that there was about the prophets and about the Old Testament. So when Paul asked him that, he knew that the answer was yes. He knew that, the, he knew that what, was, what happened was real and truth. But he said, Agrippa, do you believe what I've told you? And he said, never mind, you don't have to answer that. He said, I know you believe. And then, I, Agri and then Agrippa said unto Paul, O most, thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Church, this morning I'd like to preach a message with the Lord's will being almost. Almost. Well, preacher, what do you mean by almost? You see, I believe the church is in a pattern of almost. I believe that God's people is in a pattern of almost. I believe that the lost souls in this country are in a pattern of almost. You see, they know what they need to do. They know what they need to say. They know what they need to believe. But they're not doing it. They're on the verge of almost doing it. You see, I played sports in high school. And the ones that hurt the worst was when we almost won. It'd be the ones where we were only two or three points away from winning. We almost won. Or in shot put when I was... Just a couple inches from almost beating my record or almost getting first place. Church, do you see where I'm going with it this morning? You see, when you stand before God, and I, church, I promise you that, the, that you will. You will stand before God and give an account for everything that you've done. Uh, but when God looks at you, what will He say? What will you say? I almost, I almost did this. I almost did that. God, you've got you've to believe me. I almost did it. But church, almost doesn't save you. Almost won't save your family. Almost won't. You won't see lost souls saved if you're almost doing something. You see, I tell you that the ones that hurt the worst when we lost, because you had a chance. You had a chance to win, but you couldn't follow through. I had a chance to beat my record, but I couldn't do it. I didn't do it. I don't want to say I couldn't do it, because I could have. Maybe if I would have worked a little harder, I could have done it. Maybe if I would have maybe if I would have tried a little hard, maybe if I would have put more time in it, we would have done it. Church almost hurts. When you stand before God and you say, I almost got saved. I almost did this. That's what hurts the most. That's imagine God when he says, Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity, I never knew you. That has to hurt him. Because he knows that you almost came to the altar. He knows that you almost came and got saved. He knows that you almost stood out of your seat and came and changed your life. But he knows that you didn't. He knows. He knows, church, this morning what you've been through. But Agrippa said, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. 
You see, the thing about King Agrippa in this passage of Scripture is this is the last time you hear of King Agrippa ever again in the Bible. You see, this was the last king of the, the, Herod, the Herodian dynasty. He was the last king. King, king Herod was his great-grandpa. He's the one that tried to have Jesus killed as an infant. But now, how, how things have changed. Agrippa, he's now the king, and Paul is on trial. And, he, and Paul tells him his testimony. He tells him what he's been through. He tells him how God changed his life. And I believe that Agrippa began to think a little bit. You see, church, I'm standing up here this morning. I want you to think a little bit. I want you to think about where you're at. I want you to think about where you're going. See, Paul knew where he was going. You see, a couple chapters ago, Paul was fearing for his life. They thought that they were, they thought that they were going to kill him. But then God spoke to Paul and he said, Paul, fear not, for you must appeal to Caesar in Rome. <laughs> but you, church, you've got to realize uh, that Paul was on a journey. But Paul knew where he had to go. You see, church, I know the things that I need to do in this life to, to make it home one day. You see, the Bible says that if you believe that Jesus Christ was crucified and risen and coming again, uh, that you can be saved, but it doesn't stop there. The Bible says those that endure till the end, the same shall be saved. Church salvation is not a one and done kind of thing. It's not a one-time thing where you say, God, I'm sorry for what I've done. I'm sorry for the thing I said a couple minutes ago. I'm sorry uh, for the certain things, God. I'm sorry. And then go back out and do those same things again. That's not how salvation works. And, and Paul knew that. He said, he said, I didn't go about and do the same things that he did. He said, when God changed me, he changed every aspect of me. You know what? I believe that Agrippa said almost because he was afraid. He was afraid. First off, I think he was afraid of what Festus would say. You see, because Festus, maybe if Festus never spoke up, Agrippa would have got saved that day. Think about it, church. Think about it. It's, are, you, are you hindering somebody else from getting saved? Are you saying something that maybe somebody else doesn't like? Are you saying, hey, Festus said, he said, you're straight up crazy, Paul. He said, you don't know what you're talking about. But Paul said, I speak the words of truth, Festus. He said, you can believe it or not. Church, salvation's a take it or leave it kind of thing. You can't go 50-50. But I believe Agrippa began, he, he was afraid of the people that he was around and what they'd think. You see, Festus was beside him, and Bernice was on the other side. And you see, both of those people, they weren't Christians. They didn't serve God. So I believe that maybe Agrippa was a little bit of afraid of what was around him. Church, can I tell you that when you get saved, it doesn't matter what's around you. It doesn't matter what other people think of you. What matters is what your heavenly father thinks about you. You see, it doesn't matter what they say about you. It doesn't matter what you go through because God is the one that's in control of everything. But Agrippa said, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. You see, church, I said earlier, I said, I believe the, that there's, the people are in a pattern of almost. Well, what are they almost doing, preacher? I believe the first thing that people are almost doing is they're almost getting saved. They're almost getting saved. How many of you that when you were, when you were lost and undone, you'd come to church and you'd stand during the altar call and you'd grip the back of that pew and you'd think, well, maybe I should go. Maybe I should do this. And maybe, maybe I should go get saved. But then you don't do it. You see, that's almost getting saved. Or how, how many of you come up here and you pray and you ask God to forgive you, but then you turn around and you almost, or, and you turn around and you're out doing the same things you came into. That's almost getting saved. You see, you could come and confess God all you want to. You could come and confess salvation all you want to, but unless your life shows it, you're not saved, church. I don't care who you are. The Bible said they'll know you by your fruits. So church, there's too many people almost getting saved. There's too many people almost accepting Jesus Christ as their Savior. There's too many people almost saying, yes, I'll serve God. Yes, I'll follow God. There's too many people being fans and not followers this morning, church. The Bible said that Peter followed from afar off. He followed. The, and Jesus said, Peter, by this time tonight, you will deny me three times. They, they said, you're the man that followed Jesus. You're the man that was stood beside Jesus. He said, no, I'm not. 
He said, I'm not that man. And the Bible says that another man came to him and said, you're the one. You're the one that served God. You're the one that followed him. He said, no, I'm not. And they came to him a third time. And they said, you're that man, Peter, that served and followed Jesus. And he said, and the Bible says, even went as far as cursed him. He cursed him and said, I am not the man. And the Bible says that the cock crowed right after that. And then the Bible says that Peter followed from afar off. You see, there's too many people thinking about getting saved. There's too many th people thinking about, well, maybe I'll get saved and maybe I, I like my life too much. I believe Agrippa was too fond of his life. Maybe I think Agrippa began to think that if he got saved that maybe he wouldn't be king anymore. Maybe he'd be in the same position that Paul was in. You see, Paul was in chains. He was bound in chains when he was talking to Agrippa. So maybe Agrippa thought that because he got saved that maybe his life would be just as bad as Paul's. Can I tell you that maybe Paul went through some storms, but Paul was far better off than Agrippa ever was. You see, Paul had a home to go to one day. Paul had a heaven waiting for him one day. Agrippa didn't. But there's too many people almost getting saved. You see, this isn't a small decision to make, church. It's a very big decision, and I understand the, the hesitance about it, but church, you've got to realize that this isn't a decision that only affects your life, but it's a decision that affects your eternity. It's a decision that affects where you spend eternity. You see, there's only two options for you, church. It's heaven, or it's that lake of fire called hell. Well, preacher, I believe that I don't think hell's going to be too bad. I don't, I don't think hell's going to be as bad as you think it is, preacher. Well, Luke chapter number 16 talks about a rich man and a beggar. You see, the, the beggar, he had nothing in this life, and the rich man had everything he ever wanted. And the Bible says that they both died, and the rich man, in, being in torment, the Bible says that he was in torment, lifted up his eyes, and saw Lazarus sitting in Abraham's bosom. You see, I believe the worst thing about hell is that you'll be able to look up and see what you almost had. You'll look up and you'll be able to see what you almost got. You'll be able to look up and see the Savior that you almost got to spend eternity with. Church, I'm begging you this morning, listen to me. Think about it for a second, church. This is eternity at stake. Don't almost get saved. Don't almost serve God. Give Him everything you've got. You see, the second thing that I believe that people are almost doing is they're almost witnessing and they're almost working for God. You see, church, raise your hand if you've got lost family. Go ahead. I know we all do. We've got lost family, church. But how many of you are almost giving them a phone call? How many of you are almost getting in your car and go, driving over there and just talking to them about Jesus? How many of you are almost thinking about just telling them how good God's been? How many of you are thinking about almost, almost witnessing to them about God? Or how about how many of you are almost thinking about being the Sunday school teacher? God's put it on your heart, but you don't think you can do it. You don't think that you can be a Sunday school teacher. You don't think that you can stand up here and sing for God. You don't think that if God's called you to be a preacher that you can do it. Church, can I tell you that by yourself, you can't do anything. You can't be a Sunday school teacher. You can't be a singer. You can't be a preacher. But church, you can't even walk without God. So church, you may think that you can't do it. And you almost want to do it. But church, almost isn't going to see people saved. Church, I, a preacher, I've got lost family and they're just not getting saved. It's because too many of you are almost getting up out of your seat when the altar call comes and coming to pray for them. You see, I see, I see what you're thinking sometimes, church. I know what you're going through because I've almost thought about coming to pray for my lost family. I've almost thought about going and, and to witness it to them. I've almost thought about telling them about how good God's been. Well, preacher, I don't see them that often. You see, we've got these things called cell phones now. You see, that's all it takes is a little phone call. You see, church, there's too many people almost doing what God wants them to do. But you're robbing not only yourself of a blessing, but you're robbing somebody else of maybe eternity. Think about it. I asked you earlier. You could be the one that's hindering somebody from getting saved. 
Maybe they just need to hear your testimony. Maybe they just need to hear about God's mercy and his grace. Maybe they just need to hear about how Christ died on the cross for their sins. Almost isn't going to cut it, church. Almost doesn't see lost souls saved. Almost doesn't fill the church with people that are willing to work. Almost doesn't see people coming up the driveway and walking into the church. That's not what almost does. So see, church, I believe almost does a couple things. When you say almost, it tells God that you don't need him. It tells God that you don't need him. That you can do it on your own. Well, preacher, I never said, I never said that I can do it on my own. Yeah, but you said almost. You said almost, and that tells God that you think that there's a better way out of it. It tells God that you think there's an alternate route. It tells God that you think that you know what you need to do. It, th it tells God that you think you can figure it out by yourself. Church, can I tell you that you can't? Preacher, I never said any of that. But when you say almost, that's what it tells God. It shows God that you're letting the devil win. That you're letting the enemy win. You see, the devil's job in this life is to steal, kill, and to destroy. So when you say, I almost went and witnessed to my lost family, that's allowing the devil to keep another soul in the fire. That's allowing the devil to say that I've, I've, I've got the victory over that one person. Or when you say, I almost got saved, that's allowing the devil to, to be victorious in your life. Church, and you don't want that. Well, preacher, I never said that I love the devil. But you never said you loved God either. You never said you wanted to serve God either. So you've got a decision to make. Is it almost or is it all or nothing this morning, church? You see, it tells God that you don't trust in His plan. It tells God that you don't fully trust in what He's going to do in your life. Preacher, I'm scared. I don't know what people around me are going to think. I don't know what they're going to say about me. Well, church, can I say that a lot of things they're going to say probably won't be great. And a lot of things they're going to say might hurt your feelings, but can I tell you that there's one that cares far more than anybody on this earth for you. The Bible says he sticks closer than a brother than any friend you've ever had in this life, church. It says that, you're, it says that you don't trust God, that you want to do it on your own terms. You know, the Bible says that those that come to me must come, must come with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. They call on him while he is near, church. You see, you may be not offered another opportunity to come and get saved. You may not be offered another opportunity to, to go and witness to that lost individual. You may not be offered another opportunity to come and pray for your lost family or your lost friends this morning, church. Almost isn't going to cut it. We've got to stop almost doing things. We've got to stop almost saying that we're going to do them. But church, can I say that time is almost out? Time is almost out. Preacher, what do you mean? I'm pretty young. Well, you may be young, but can I tell you that death is no respecter of persons. Death is no respecter of persons. The Bible says that no man knows the hour or the day that the Lord should come again. And you know when the Lord comes again, that's it. That's when he takes his spirit with him. And the Spirit of God is how you get saved, church. So when, it, when He comes back to get His church, it's slim or not. It's, it's, there's very slim chances that you make heaven your home. But can I say that time's almost out? You don't know how many breaths you have left. The only breath you're guaranteed is the one that you just took. You see, you don't know how much longer your lost family's going to live. You don't know how much longer that you're going to have an opportunity to go witness to him, church. Time is almost out. Look around you. All you see is sin. Sin, it's a dangerous and dark world out there, church. I believe the Lord could come back at any moment. But I've got a question for Are you ready this morning? Are you ready to meet God? Are you ready to stand on trial before Jesus Christ? You see, I believe that when we, I believe that when we die, we'll stand before a judge. The almighty judge. The only true judge, church. And we're going to give an account for every single thing that we've done on this earth. Every single thing that we said. Every single thing that we've done. And he's going to have two responses for you. 
Enter in, child. Welcome home. Welcome home. Enter into the joys of the Lord. Or he's going to say, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. I never knew you. But church, I want you to think about this for a second. In all seriousness, I want you to close your eyes and just think about this. When you stand before God, what's God going to say? What is God going to say to you when you stand before Him for eternity? Is He going to say, enter in? Or is He going to say, depart from me? And church, if He says, depart from me, what's your response going to be? What, what are you going to say to God when He says, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity? Preacher, God, I almost got saved. God, I almost went to the altar that Sunday morning that Micah preached out of Acts chapter number 26. I remember the day that I almost got saved, God. I remember the day that I almost gave my heart to you, God. I remember the day that I almost turned my life over to you. God, I remember the day I almost changed my life. But God's going to say, depart from me. Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. I never knew you. And I believe it will break the heart of God to know that you almost got saved. To know that you almost changed your life, but you said it wasn't important enough. You almost got saved, but God is going to say, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. Church, and then, after that it's done, you spend eternity in a place called hell that wasn't even intended for you but for the devil and his angels. Or maybe you'll say this, well, God, I almost went, and I almost witnessed to those lost loved ones. I almost went, I almost got saved. Church, I'm not saying that you're going to go to hell if you don't witness to your lost loved ones, but when you do that, you're saying that you don't, you don't trust God, you don't believe in God's will in your life, and you may be distancing yourself from God every single day. And maybe you just fall so short that you miss eternity by that much. Almost. You almost made heaven your home. But instead you have to spend eternity in hell. Think about it church. Where will you spend eternity? Where will you spend eternity? Well preach I don't know what to say. I don't know what to tell them when, they, when I go and witness to them. Do what Paul did. Do what Paul did. He told them where he came from. He told him what he used to do. But then he told him where God brought him to. He told him how God changed his life. He told him where he was going to now. Give him your testimony, church. Give him, that's all you got to do is tell him about God's mercy and God's grace. And how it can change their lives the same way it changed yours. The same way it changed your life, church. You see, I... I'm 18 years old. You may not think that I have much of a testimony. So I, I've, I've, I don't think I've ever done this while I'm preaching, but I just want to share my testimony with you folks. You see, I was saved on April 24th, 2005 as a four-year-old boy. I remember across the street, my dad preached a message, and I came down, and I knelt at this altar. And you see, I believe that God, you preacher, you believe that God can save a four-year-old. I believe that God can do anything that he wants to. And at the air, and I remember that in the bulletin, there's memory verses that we would memorize. And I would memorize them, and I'd stand up in front of the church, and I'd begin to, I'd, I'd recite those memory verses and where they came from. And God put on my heart at the age of 11, he said, Micah, you're going to be a preacher. And I said, God, are you sure? I'm, all, I'm 11 years old. You can't use an 11-year-old. Why not? Jesus was 12. Jesus was 12 years old when he, he was in the midst of the temple talking to the doctors and the lawyers. Why couldn't he use someone just as young? I'm not saying that I'd be the best preacher ever at the age of 11, and I'm not saying I ever will be. But I'm saying that God can use anybody that he wants to. So at the age of 11, I announced my call to preach. Oh, and at the age of 15, at the age of 15, I'd hit the biggest road bump that I never thought I'd hit. You see, I was across the street preaching on a Sunday night. It was a youth service. And I preached out of the book of Revelation about what, what, what heaven would be like. And I remember it, church. 
about what heaven would be like and what was going to be in heaven and what wasn't going to be in heaven. And I said some things. I'm not going to go into detail, but some kids at school found out. And they didn't like what I had to say. And that's okay. They can have their opinion. But church, I stood on the word of God. And you know, I may not handle the things the best way. I may have said something maybe that I shouldn't have said. But church, I believe that everything that I said was from God's word. And I believe that with my heart. But the kids at school found out. And to be 15 years old going to school. I was a sophomore in high school. And it wasn't that Monday. But I remember me and mom came back from the store on Monday night. And dad said you might want to go look on Facebook. Because that's where the video was. And that's where things went downhill for me. They begin to say, why, why would you do something like that? Why would you say something like that to say that, to say that that's wrong and, and to say that that's a sin? Well, church, because that's what the Bible says. But I begin, I, I begin to read those things, and I walked into school on Tuesday. I remember I was so scared to walk into school on Tuesday. And I remember walking down that hallway. And I remember kids would just look at me. They look because church, they shared it like wild. It spread like wildfire. You see, the devil works faster than you'd ever think. Church, you may think that you're all fine and dandy right now, but when the devil gets a hold of you, he spreads quicker than you think. When he attacks, he attacks with all or nothing. He brings out all the stops. You see, I was a 15-year-old boy being looked at like I, I didn't belong there. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't deserve to go to school there. I didn't belong amongst those people. I was 15 years old, and I, I, I remember that kids thought I was different, and they thought that I, that I was weird. <laughs> but then I think about that song. I want to be different. I want to be changed. Church, the Bible says, be ye a peculiar people, set apart from the world. You see, they can look at me all they want to. They can th I remember somebody asking me, they said, is it really that important to you? Is it really that important to you that people, that it matters what other people do? I said, it doesn't matter what other people do, but I'm going to tell them what is right and what's wrong. You see, yes, it's very important to me. You see, because I want everybody to go to heaven when they die. You see, the Bible says that God is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You see, church, I was 15 years old going through something that I never thought I would go through. It was the hardest thing I ever had to do. And I'd lie to you if I didn't try things, or if I told you that I didn't try to, get, to fit back in with that crowd. And, I didn't, and I'd be lying to you if I told you that I didn't try to act like I belonged there. But you see, the fact of the matter is, is that I didn't belong there. I didn't belong in that group. I didn't belong in the midst of those people. You see, someone asked me the other day, they said, Why don't, have, you ever, have you ever tried alcohol? I said, no, I've never tried it. They said, why not? I said, because I don't have a desire to. You see, because I've got a home I'm trying to go to one day. They said, you're just a goody two-shoes, aren't you? They said, you're just a nice kid. I said, you, you're, you better believe I'm a goody two-shoes. And I, I embraced the church. I remember he said, he said, he said, why, why don't you just try it? I said, because I don't want to. There's too much at stake. There's too much at stake, church. You see, because the first sip could lead to something else. And something else and something else. Church, are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? God's merciful, church. I'd be lying to you if I said that I've been perfect. I haven't. But God's brought me through everything. That, but God has brought me from the uttermost, or the guttermost, and put me in the uttermost, church. He set my feet on a solid rock. Church, God's too good to you to almost get saved. God's too good to you to almost tell somebody about His goodness and His grace this morning, church. So as we stand this morning, as we stand, church, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing. But church, don't almost get saved this morning. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? You see, church, God brought me through it by His grace and His mercy. Church, He can bring you through it this morning. Preacher, my life's just fine being lost and undone. For now, 
It may be all right for now. But where will you spend eternity at this morning, church? If you should die right now, where would you spend eternity? Would you make heaven your home? Church, I'm asking.